All right. I know I mentioned here a couple minutes ago, we have a lot to cover, so I am going to get started. Again, welcome to everyone just joining the room now. Um, if you're able to see my screen here, um, today is our NAC 101 webinar. So we will be going through some of the basics here in uh, NAC. So you will start to learn how you can use NAC to build out your use cases. We will um, take a look at a live app as well as start to build out a portion of that live app. So. Uh, diving into it here. Uh, I am Ro. My name is Ro. I'm part of our onboarding team here at NAC. So we work with a lot of our customers that are just looking to get started with NAC and maybe need some uh, support getting started, building out your application and, and understanding the product a little bit better. Um, you'll also notice my colleague uh, Max is on the call here as well. He's a part of our onboarding team and um, will be in the in the Q&A section looking at the questions that you guys may be submitting. So about that Q&A section, as we kind of go through the demo and then the live build, we will be keeping it out on the Q&A area. So please drop any questions that you have there as they come up, drop them there. We'll try to respond there, but then we'll be taking a look at those questions in the second half of the webinar today. So first half of this webinar, what to expect will be a review of the customer portal. We're gonna demo that. And then we will also do a live build where we're going to build out a portion of that app. And then we're gonna leave the second half to Q&A. So any questions you have, throw them there. We would love to hear your use case. We would love to hear if there, if you've already started building, if there's some areas that you're getting stuck in the app, um, please let us know. Um, we are here to support and we wanna definitely try to answer those questions. Um, if you don't feel like you have your questions answered today, you can always reach out to our team and we'll talk a little bit more at the end of this webinar about how to work with us and um, get some additional support as you're building out your application. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and get started. And again, Q&A section, let us know. If you've got any questions there, that is open for you to ask any questions that come up. So we are going to dive into our customer portal. So if you haven't um, had a chance to play around with NAC, if you're new coming to NAC, uh, our platform is for building applications out to help you manage your data. So if you are working in spreadsheets or maybe you're working with an existing um, uh, no code type platform, but you need something a little bit more robust where you can give different users different levels of access to your data. Um, as well as doing some reporting, uh, NAC is a great solution for that. So uh, we're going to take a look here at our customer portal. The customer portal, the purpose of this portal is to allow users to log in and to view their service request records. So um, we've got customers that can log in and we've also got business managers that can log in. Um, with that, this is going to show you different levels of permissions that are available within NAC. So I'm going to log in here as our customer, and we're going to take a look at what the customer sees on their end. So logging in as a customer with NAC, we have different views that are available within NAC, and views are just ways to display your data, and we'll dive into more of that once we get into the live build. But you will notice here we've got a rich text view, we've got menu button views that allow you to take different actions within your application. So if we wanted to submit a new service request record, if the customer needed to view their service requests or review invoices, we can add that functionality with just a button. We also have a table or a grid here that's allowing us to see all of the open service requests for this, this particular logged in customer as well. And with this grid, we can also click in to see more details about the service requests. And we're probably gonna get that notification. So I apologize if you guys uh, continue to see that as we kind of go through here. Um, but now we can dive in to see more details about this particular service request, request record. That's gonna stump me up today. So uh, taking a look at this details on this record, you can see that we offer a variety of field types. Uh, you, you're seeing number fields, you're seeing date time fields, you're also seeing uh, just general short text fields. We even have paragraph uh, fields as well as equation fields and uh, more. So with NAC, you've got a, a variety of views that you can add to your application to display your data as well as a variety of field types to choose from to help make sure the data goes in, in the format that you want 
things to go in. So on top of these views here, we talked about these buttons. We have a form view that allows us to add a record uh, to our database. So we can make a selection here, we can add test. Once we do that, we can navigate back to our dashboard and we should see that new test record that was just added here to our database. We can also go in and view our records, all of our records within the, in the system um, as well. So we've got past information, we've got um, open information. You notice that we've got a complete status and open status, whereas on our dashboard, we were only looking at records with an open status. So this means we have filtering to allow you to filter your views to only show the data that you want those users to see when they're logging in. Um, and again, uh, we've got a link to see more information about a specific record. Uh, jumping back into our main dashboard or to our um, customer dashboard here, we have invoices. Again, I talked about being able to uh, have different field types and we've got equation fields as well. Uh, you'll see some of that in action here where we've got currency field equations and we're able to uh, really make sure the data goes in the way that we want and we can customize these views to display the data in the way that we would like to see it. So that is our customer portal dashboard. Let's actually jump back in here and log in as our business manager. You'll notice when I click to log into this page, uh, I'm still logged in as my customer. My customer is unable to log in and see any, any details here So um, with their credentials. So we'll need to log in as a manager to be able to see what the manager can see. So again, if you're looking for security and making sure that your different users have different levels of access to the data, uh, this is how um, you would handle that within NAC is with different user groups. So this user group is our business managers. And as you can see, when they log into the portal, they have a slightly different view. We still have some rich text views. We still have our table view, but they're able to see all of the open services across um, their two customers here within NAC. Uh, they've got uh, the customer table. They can go in and look at services and see all of the services in the system. And again, we're doing filtering with these tables where we're able to see open service requests, and we're also able to see completed services. So super cool. Again, you can really filter the data and display it the way you want. Um, and again, if we jump back over to our customer. We can say, hey, let's take a look at Sarah's information here. And we can see high level details here of uh, information with uh, our customer here, along with email, phone number, again, the various field types. And then we have the related pieces of, pieces of information. So NAC is a relational database and you're able to relate a uh, customer to these other records here within NAC. So we're able to see their services and we're also able to see invoices that are tied to that particular customer. So um, if you're familiar with databases, this is your parent and child views all in one view. Um, and again, um, this is just three tables that are capturing different bits of information related to a single record on the customer table. Um, super convenient, super nice to be able to pull kind of this high level overview or a very detailed overview of what the customer is doing in your database. And again, the customer, all they were seeing when they were logged in was their information. Whereas here, we're able to, as an admin or a manager, see all of the information related to that customer. And again, we have uh, some invoicing information. If we wanted to dive into the invoice details, we could see that here. We can add records to the system, again, via a form. And then we can also view reports with this view. So NAC does have some reporting features um, within NAC as well. So. This concludes uh, the demo of our customer portal, walking through it, seeing what you can potentially build with NAC. This is just one use case. You might have a use case where you have someone from a department that needs to log in to view only their project records or their uh, budget, and they're looking to see and track their budget with different transactions and expenses. Uh, the workflows are pretty much the same, but still having a group be able to log in and view information that's related to them. So let's dive into it. Um, I am going to jump into uh, 
a blank app, or actually I'm going to jump into the dashboard within NAC. Um, we will actually take a look at the builder for this particular template app, uh, which is our customer portal template app, and look at the back end here. If you haven't um, already uh, started an account with NAC or you maybe started with a template, um, you've noticed you've got some tables and some user roles that are already created for you, as well as uh, some records that have been added with uh, test data and um, so on and so forth. So just as a general note, if you are starting with a template app, uh, some of the confusion comes around, well, where do you start? What can you update? What do you have control over? Well, with our template apps, you can customize them as you see fit. So if there is information that you would like to change within your um, application, maybe you don't refer to things as services um, or invoices, you have the freedom to change that information. So everything here can be customized and updated if you are starting with a template app. So then it becomes about where are those settings within NAC. So you will notice if you've got a field here, you've got three dots here, you can click on those three dots and you'll see that you've got some settings available. So you can go into those settings and make updates and changes to that application. And then as far as uh, the name of the table, you'll see you have settings here as well where you can make changes as well. But before we get into that, I do want to kind of take a step back and, and talk about where are we at um, when we are, we're looking at um, NAC and, and understanding the different views that are available within NAC. So um, right now we are in the settings or we are in what we call the builder for our app for a single app. So we're in this customer portal app and this is where all of our uh, settings are, our customizations are as we design what we walk through in the live app. So uh, starting on the left-hand side, the left-hand panel, you've got your data tab. This is going to be where your tables are located at. This is where you can add new tables. Uh, you'll notice if you click this option here, it's going to take us to another page that's going to allow us to either start with a blank table. We can start with a pre-made table. So if you know you need a company table or a contacts table, you could, you could start there. Um, we also have uh, Google Sheets. You can also start with Google Sheets if you wanted to import your data from uh, an already existing Google Sheet. And you can also import your data as well using a CSV or an Excel file. So you'll have these three options to create a new table. Um, exiting out of that, though, uh, you also have a way to create users. Again, I mentioned these are different user groups. So this is a group of people that will have access to your NAC application. And then further, we'll use these groups uh, to set our page permissions once we start to build things out. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, each table has uh, fields that get added. So I talked about those different field types you could choose from. We can add a field and you'll see all of the different field types here from short text to paragraph, all the way through to a equation as you scroll down. You even have file and image fields, as well as link, um, signature, rating, and a connection field, which is how we relate our tables. And more on that in a little bit. So that's our data tab. And again, it's about uh, your uh, tables that you're creating, the user groups that you're creating, as well as um, your fields that are getting added. You also have this records option, so you can see all of your data that is stored into your NAC application. Um, these two tabs are the same. They get you to the same place. Uh, if you click records here, records here, whichever table is selected, you'll see all of your records in the system. Um, you can edit these records. If you are on our pro plan and above, you can actually see a history of changes on that record. So um, some cool features that are added there. Again, this is your developer designer area. So uh, there's not a lot of functionality other than what you're viewing. And then this is the area where you're building things out. So uh, again, um, we are on our records tab here. You'll notice tasks. Tasks will not be available during the trial, so you won't see these, but tasks are a way to automate things in the background in your application. So we call them schedule tasks. They're available with our pro plan and above. So if you click to add a task, let's say you wanted to trigger an email to be sent 
to the team whenever someone uh, submitted a service request, request record. So you can say, hey, run this task uh, daily and um, set when that task is going to run. And then you could say update this record or send an email. And then you could specify what that criteria is. Maybe you want to notify somebody specifically from a team uh, that deals with PC um, uh, troubleshooting issues. Then you can specify what that criteria is. The service, the system type is PC and specify who you want that to go to. Super straightforward, but tasks can be used to do everything from updating a record to updating connected records, inserting a connected record, and um, as I mentioned here, uh, sending a custom email. But once that's set up, you'll uh, you'll specify when you want it to run, maybe every day or every Monday or at the start of the week um, at a certain time, and the task will just check for that criteria. If it meets it, then it'll it'll um, uh, take action that you've specified. All righty, exiting out of that, pages is where I usually say all the magic happens. That's where you're building out your app, you're designing what your app will do and what your live app users will do within the application. So um, we've got different pages. With pages, we add views to a page. We've got a lot of views to choose from to then add to the page uh, within your NAC application. I'm not going to dive too deep into the pages here because I actually want to build from scratch so you guys can have a better sense of what that building process looks like. Um, you'll also find here um, below pages uh, app settings, and this is where you can add the name of your app, the description. You'll also find some security information and settings. Uh, we've got live app design. This is where you customize the look and feel of your application and what your buttons and menus look like. And then we've also got um, the user login area where uh, we had a question earlier this week around how do we secure a page or how do we automatically log someone out once they've uh, you know, been active for a while. And all of these settings will be here. They're available with all of our plans um, and it'll be under user logins. We also have an e-commerce feature. So if you are looking to um, add a paywall within your application, uh, you can enable your e-commerce feature. We work with a couple different payment processors. So you can set up your, your payment processors within your application, and um, that'll be Stripe and PayPal. And then you can utilize NAC to collect payments within um, your platform. This feature is available to test during the trial, and it's also a feature that would be available on our pro plan as well. Um, you'll also notice we have the API and code section here. Um, you can connect your application to other applications using our API. You can also add additional JavaScript and CSS if you want to customize uh, the way your app um, looks, as well as uh, the interactiveness of your application. So uh, that section is here. Our dev docs are linked here as well. And um, again, you have the freedom to customize your app, the look and the feel as you see fit. Um, then you'll see this embed section. If you are wanting to share your app with others or embed your app potentially on your website, you'll see an option here to embed your op application. And it's as simple as just creating a code and linking it to the page that you want to link it to. And uh, NAC will create a snippet of code for you that you can then use to uh, share within um, or share on your website or um, any other platform that um, that will accept an embed code. Um, and it's that straightforward, uh, but let's dive into actually building out a portion of this app here. So I'm gonna actually jump back to our dashboard here. Well, and before I jump back to the da dashboard, give me just a moment, I'm gonna switch screens here. <laughs> Okay, hopefully everyone's able to see my screen here. So if you're navigating, if you're in a template app, for example, 
here to navigate back to that dashboard that we were just on. You're going to click your NAC icon here, and that's going to take you back to this dashboard. Your dashboard is going to have everything from your account settings and information to um, help articles and resources, as well as you're going to see your NAC applications here. There's going to be a quick way to create an app either from scratch or starting with a template. And then you'll also see some resources here to our video guides. So uh, just taking a quick look around, you'll notice you've got some options here within your, your app. You've got uh, a way to uh, jump quickly to your app settings, which will take you to the builder. Um, oops. And then you'll also, if you wanted to duplicate an app, you can definitely do that from here. And then you'll have some other additional settings here. I wanted to show you guys that so that um, you had an idea of where you're at within your NAC um, environment. So once you log in, um, this is your main dashboard and you can access your apps here, but you'll also have resources here. If we wanted to start an app from scratch, we can click here um, or we can click here and you'll see the options here to um, either start with a sample app, start with AI, import your data or start from scratch. So we're going to start from scratch um, and we're going to build out a portion of our app that we um, just took a look at, the customer portal. So again, um, with NAC, when you start with a, a blank app, um, a table is created for you. We walk through how you could customize this table, um, settings to make it your own. Um, since we are building out a customer portal where we want our customers to log in to view services, we will um, want to create a table that's going to collect our service information. So let's jump into that here. Give me again just a moment. We're going to first update this so we know this is our services table. And so now we're going to start adding fields. So we're going to start thinking about what it is, what information are we looking to collect as it relates to this service information. So one of the things that we might collect first is um, the system type in this use case. I think that was one of the fields that we had. So we can choose a multiple choice field um, to do that. So we'll quickly grab a multiple choice field. You'll have your options there. I've got this information pulled up somewhere else so I can quickly set up my options and I'm gonna click save. That's gonna save that information here. But I want you to take notice of all of the different options here within this field that allow you to customize it. You can set this field to required. You can um, set a default option, what your blank text default looks like and what that sort order is for this multiple choice field. And then you've got some additional options for layout so I won't dive too deeply into these settings, but I do want you to take note of that when you are building out your application, that you have uh, wonderful settings here to help you customize your fields. So we've got our system type, and maybe we want to add another um, short text field, or we can update this short text field to be, um, uh, uh, let's see, capture our maybe instructions and comments on this particular application. So I'm just going to repurpose that initial field that was created and call it my instructions and, and uh, comments. I may also want to capture another multiple choice field for the services that are needed. So again, you've got your settings there. Now we can continue to, to build this out. Um, maybe we'll add one more field. We'll add a date field capture the date and time, the service date. Again, take note, there's different settings here and we can say, um, no, we don't wanna capture the current date. Um, and then you also have time and format, time format options, as well as if you wanted to do something like a repeating or a date with the start and end time. So now we've kind of started building this out. Again, think of the services as the static information or the information related to the service uh, record. Um, your fields can be moved. So if I wanted to move things around, I can drag them and move them around. Uh, again, you have settings that are here. You'll notice you have validation rules and conditional rules. Again, 
I encourage you to click on these options to see what's there, see what's available for you to again, make sure the data is going into the system the way that you want it to go into the system. Um, so we've got our service records um, set up. We're, we're, we're building some structure here. So another really important piece to think about as you're building out your application is who needs to have access to your data. So I know we touched upon user roles um, right at the top um, where we have in our, our demo, we had our customers. We also had our, our managers that could log in. So one of the important things, again, is really setting this up early on, especially if you're thinking about limiting access to a different group. Um, within NAC, the first piece of that, that process is going to be setting up those user roles. So this is something you'll want to do early on uh, because you'll carry that through as you're building out your pages. So we're going to go ahead and enable those user roles, and I'm going to add uh, a couple different user roles. I'm going to add one for my customers because I know I want them to log into the system, and then I'm also going to add one for my managers because I want them to, again, have access and, and have different views in my customers. So when I enable that, I'm able to create these two groups. So what you'll see now is I have two more tables added under my accounts table. So if I click on customers, you'll see I have these five default fields. These can't be removed. They're part of our, our user role feature. They are required. Um, and you'll see with our managers, we have the same information here. So we can continue to build out these, these fields if we need to capture maybe an address field for our customer, we can do that. And you'll notice that we have some options for our address autocomplete and geocoding. This is available with our pro plan and above. So if you needed a map feature, this will be something that you'd want to have access to. But we can, again, uh, going back to building out this customer table, we can add all of the necessary fields. Maybe we want to capture a phone number as well. And uh, again, this is works just like a table. It's just also going to include the component that lets us to set permissions. So this is um, our customer table. You can dive into your manager table and collect any additional information that you want with your manager. So again, user roles, super important to think about early on who needs to have access. And if you need to set different levels of permissions, then you'll want to have multiple. And that's when you start to get into the groups. So groups of people think groups of people getting added to each one of these tables um, that then can log in. Now, uh, now that we've kind of set up our services, we've set up uh, the different users that are going to need access to the system. We need to talk about how we're going to relate that data. So in our demo, customers could log in and they could view their services. So how do we tie them together? How do we relate that information? So in NAC, we have a feature called connections. Um, for um, people that are familiar with spreadsheets, it's like a lookup field to allow you to look up in another um, worksheet to pull information into another worksheet. Or if you're coming from uh, databases or access, you're used to maybe hearing primary keys and foreign keys. Um, our connections field is like a foreign key. It, it's gonna live in your child table. So we don't need a primary key. We don't need um, foreign keys, so to speak, but you do need a connection field to make that connection. So how do you know where the connection needs to go um, within NAC? Um, I just mentioned if you're used to foreign keys, you know foreign keys will live in a child table. So it's gonna be on the child table or the side of that statement where I've got a customer who logs in that has many services uh, tied to them, it's going to be in that services table where I'm going to add that connection field. Um, you'll see the option to add the connection field here. You'll also see it under fields down here. So we can click add the connection and we can say, I need to tie this service record to a customer. So we're going to add our customer field. And you'll look at this statement, read it carefully. Each service connects with one customer. Each customer connects with many services. If you find yourself switching these around, uh, more than likely you're in the wrong table. Um, so exit out of this and head to the other table. Uh, there are cases where you might need a many to many and that's fine. You'll always just place the connection on the record or on the table where you'll be doing the most updating, um, if that makes sense. So each service connects with one customer. Yep, that sounds good. Each customer connects with many services. 
Excellent. So that's it. That's how you connect your tables. That's all you need. Um, and nine times out of 10, leaving it one to many is, is absolutely acceptable. Again, you might have many to many. Um, one to one is super rare, but uh, uh, the one to many is perfect. So now that we've um, kind of set this up, we've got our the fundamental basics set up of, a, of an app to get us to a good working state. We've got our services table to collect the service data. We've got our customers and our managers to allow us to create some permissions once we get over to pages. Um, typically, the next step that I like to do is head over to records and start to add some test data. You're more than welcome to import your data at this step. Um, I would say import maybe five to 10 example records or test records so that you can start to get an idea and a sense of what your data will look like once you build out your pages. But this is usually that step where you just want to add some test data. And I would typically start with my user roles. Reason being, we need to create a user so that they can log into the system. Um, this is also uh, super important in the early stages. So create that user. This will allow us to log into our system. And this will make more sense here in, in, a, in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and add a test customer record row as the customer. Do customer, keeping it simple for us. And I'll just throw in some sort of address just so we have something in here. And we'll hit submit. So now we have our test customer record um, and we could do the same thing if we wanted to for uh, the manager record as well, just so we can log in as a manager. All right, so we've got some test data here. We can, if we wanted to, um, head over to our services table and start to add a record there just so we have some, some details. We'll say printer, we need troubleshoot and repair. We'll throw a date on there for right now. We need help. And then you'll see my one customer now. So if that helps to kind of bring things together, my lookup field, my foreign key, um, I'm able to see that one customer that I created on my customer table now to choose from. And again, we're just in the back end adding test data. Um, there are definitely ways within the live app to uh, make it easier so your customer is not selecting themselves um, every single time. And we'll, we'll walk through that here in a moment. But now we've got some, some test data here. I might want to add one other customer so we can, can clearly see um, permissions. I'll throw Max customer on here. And we'll do customer two. And we'll just leave these blank for right now. And so uh, if we wanted to add another uh, test record here, BC networking, pick a date. And now you see Max is also in here as well. So now we're, we're set up, we're ready to go. We've got some test data. We've got our users set up. Now we can kind of start heading over to pages and talk about what it is that we want to see and do. So uh, by default, NAC will add a home page. This home page is a public page um, denoted by just the icon here. And it lets you know this page can be publicly accessed. So what does that mean? Um, all of your NAC apps have their own personalized URL, NAC personalized URL. So you'll see here, Don Ray at NAC.com, dot NAC.com and the untitled NAP, um, NAC app name. So if I change my app name, this would change. Um, and then we're on our home page. So this is our NAC personalized URL. Um, it's going to include our NAC account along with our app name and anything after the hash is the actual page that you are on. So um, you'll see this page is blank. There's nothing on it. If I were to navigate back to my home page here, it's blank. It's no, there's nothing on it. So um, a lot of confusion happens when someone gets to a, a page and they're wondering where's their data. They're expecting to see what they may have set up under data and records to just show up on the home page. Um, nope, there's still some work to do. We still need to build out uh, our workflows, so to speak, or what we want to see and do in our live app. 
So the first part of that is going to be adding a page. So we've added a page here, our home page. Um, but I'm going to actually start from scratch. We'll talk about removing this page or what we want to do with this page later. I'm going to add a page from scratch, and I'm going to choose to add a uh, login page. So this is how you create a new page in that. Uh, the public page, which would be similar to the home page, would be this option here. We have a login page, and then you have an option to create a drop-down menu. So that means you can take a set of pages and put them all under one drop-down. Um, for this purpose, we're going to start with a login page. And this login page, we want our customers to be able to have this dashboard where they log in and see only their service records. So I'm not going to give permission to all my users. I'm going to actually limit this to a specific group. I'm going to choose my customers. This is all for them. I want to create a dashboard for them and an experience and, a, and a, an app for them to log in. So I'm going to set my permissions and I'm going to click continue. And I might call this my um, customer dashboard. And I'm going to add that page. Again, this page will be blank. As a matter of fact, if I click a preview or my go to live app option, um, you'll see I'm now hit with a login form that's going to say, hey, you need to log into your application. Um, and you guys know I just set up some test credentials. So allow me to log in as a customer. And once I log in, I have nothing on my page. So we need to add to this page. You'll also notice my navigation is starting to be built out here. I have my home page, which is public. And then I have my dashboard, which we've logged in at already. So I'm going to exit out of that. And again, we're blank here. So now let's talk about what we want our customer to see and do. We want them to uh, log into the app and we maybe want them to see a table of all of their, uh, their service records. So we're going to pick our grid option here. So our views, these are ways that we can display um, data in NAC or add data and edit data within our system. So we're going to choose a grid so we can see our services um, in a grid view here on the right-hand side. Now, NAC will ask, do we want to show this logged in group all the service records or do we want to limit that? Do we want to limit and show services connected to the logged in customer? That's exactly what we want. We don't need um, uh, me logging in and seeing Max's uh, services. We only want to log in and see the ones that I've submitted. Um, within the platform. So I'm going to choose services connected to my logged in customer. And then we can give them the option to edit. You'll see that populate on the right hand side. We can give them a link to view more details. It's entirely up to you at this stage. It's more about what do you want to give them access to? And we can do that quickly from here. If not, I'm going to uncheck the edit because maybe I don't want them to edit the record, but I do want them to be able to view more details if we were capturing more information about it. So I'll click continue, and then I'm going to add the grid, and it's that straightforward. So um, once your the grid has been added, this is kind of grayed out because this grid is selected, and you'll see on the left-hand side, there's a panel here that allows us to edit this even further. As I hover my cursor, you'll see I have options to click on a, a field or a column here, and I will have even another uh, panel that opens up to allow me to customize uh, this even further. If I wanted to change my header, I could. If I wanted to add some display rules to say if system type is um, printer, you know, set my background color to a specific color or change the text style to um, whatever, you know, if we want to bold, if we want to set the back, again, background color, you have a lot of options here for your display rules to update here. Um, and then you've got some design uh, formatting here as well. Again, we won't dive into it, but wanted you guys to know these settings are available as you go through each one of your column headers, you'll see um, what's available. Your links to take you back before you save are going to be right up here at the left-hand side. You'll notice if I'm back on this uh, column here, this is my start point here. I have my source that's telling me this grid is displaying service records connected to my logged in customer. So that means this is showing what it needs to show. And uh, if you're troubleshooting and you're saying, hey, all my data is being displayed here, I don't want that to happen. Um, check your source. That's always a good place to check uh, to make sure that the information is being displayed correctly. Um, 
So again, you have filtering set options, and this is also where you can um, set your sort for your 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 table. Now, if you guys remember back in the, the, the demo earlier, we were able to set our services based on a status. Now we didn't add a status field here, but this would be where we would uh, potentially filter those records to say, hey, we only wanna see uh, service records with the status of, of um, complete or a status of open. Or maybe in this case, since we have a date field, we wanna see everything that is um, today or after, right? Upcoming services uh, request records. So this is where you would set that filtering for the table. And uh, this will allow you to create custom views based on what it is that you wanna be focused on and showing uh, within that view. I'm gonna remove that for right now. Um, settings, you have options to turn on keyword search. You can allow your users to export their records. We can turn on inline editing, which just turns your table into a spreadsheet where they can now click into a field and make a change. Um, and again, lots of settings here. You've got column summaries, um, filtering options available. So would love to dive into it, but I do wanna make sure we have some time for questions and um, we'll encourage you guys. NAC is very robust. If you don't think it's possible, uh, check, look around click on things, but to also don't hesitate to reach out to us. For our trial customers, you should see a, a chat option here that you can just jump in and reach out to the team um, and let us know what questions you have. If you're looking for a feature or wondering how you should set something up, please let us know. Um, so lots of settings there. Then you'll also see your add columns. So if you wanted to, if we had more columns here and we wanted to add them to the view, we could. We could also remove columns if we didn't want to see specific columns, we can just remove them or we can add them back. You can also access uh, fields on other tables. So if I wanted to grab maybe my address field um, or phone field and drop it in there, I could. You can see me moving things around. I can move my columns around as well. And um, uh, this will allow you to again, uh, access those fields on connected tables. Uh, we have the action link, so maybe we do want to give them edit access. We didn't do it at the early step, but we can want to do it now. We can click on edit, and um, that will add that link there to allow them to edit the record. And if we want to give them the power to delete, we also can do that too. So you can really customize what the users are doing within the application um, based on those permissions that you set on that page. Um, who has access? Okay, I'm building out a portal for my um, customers to be able to view their service records. So I'm going to remove that page and remove this as well. So that's it in terms of uh, these options here. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now we can continue to build out this page even further. We can add a view to allow um, a form to maybe add a new service record. So I can say add a new service record connected to the logged in customer, which just means they don't have to select their name in that drop down or that lookup field. We can remove that field once the form has been added. So we can click continue. Um, I can even quickly make this a menu button, turn it into a menu button as you see here and add the form. And again, this menu view will have its own settings. And views can be moved on a page wherever you want them to go. Um, we'll move our button up above. But as we add these new links, our view link, our button link, you'll see pages start to cascade underneath. So this add service is just linking to this page here. Um, and again, your views can be edited by just clicking on them or clicking on your pencil icon. And again, you'll see a ton of settings over here. Give yourself time to explore. Um, since we know in the source that this is connecting to the logged in customer, I can go ahead and remove that field there. Um, I can also do some things with uh, rules. I can say what happens when this form gets submitted. I want to re redirect my users back to the parent page. Um, you'll also notice that there's record rules uh, that we talked about. So if you wanted to maybe capture, instead of setting the service date here, if we were to remove it, we wanted to use a rule to say set that service date um, update this record whenever it runs. Let's set the service date to the current date and time. So it'll grab the current date. Um, record rules are great for 
updating uh, the current record, connected records, and inserting new records into another table. So record rules are really great for that type of automation. Um, one other thing you'll want to note is emails. You can trigger an email to go out. So uh, if you did want to, at this stage, when they submit this, to send the email to your internal team, you can customize an email to notify the team. All right, um, I'm going to hit save on this. So again, here's our site map here that we started building out. Um, we've got our home page. We've got our customer dashboard uh, with the login page. Once they log in, they see their, their records here. If they click uh, view, it'll take them to this page here to view more details. Um, if they click on this option here, it'll take them to this page to add a service. So that's it. We've we built the customer view where the customer can log in and view their data. We can take a look at this by clicking on go to live app or actually our preview option. I'm already logged in. So now we can see that one record. If you remember, we have two records in the system, one for Max, one for myself. I'm only seeing the one that's connected to me. Um, I turned on inline editing. So now you can see what that behavior is. Um, we can click on this link to view more details. We can head back. I can come in, add a new service request uh, record for my Mac um, to install some software. Oh, I can't spell request today. And then I'm gonna hit submit. And this should redirect me back to my parent page. It did, and now you can see that new request is has been added to the table. So it's working as, as anticipated. Um, now it's all about rinsing and repeating. If you want to do something similar for your managers, you just rinse and repeat. You'll repeat the same steps. You might go, hey, I'm going to add a login page. I'm going to give permission to my managers. Boom, done that. I can call this my manager dashboard. Add the page. And now I can say, what do I want my managers to see? I want them to see a grid of all my customers. Wonderful. I want them to be able to maybe edit the customer record, and I want them to see more details about the customer. This is a, a really important part. Uh, we talked earlier about the parent-child relationship in one particular view. NAC makes it super simple to build that out rapidly once you have things configured the in the best way. So let's say we wanted to view more details about the customer. We click this link. How? What else do we want on that page? Um, we can click to show potentially a grid of all of our services connected to that one customer on that details page. So now we can build out this page with all of the child views um, with it in one um, configuration as we, are, we start to add this kind of workflow to our application. Um, so that's it. I'm going to click continue. And we'll just go ahead and add that grid. And now we're starting to build out the workflows for potentially our manager dashboard. So if I take a look at this here, navigate back here, let's let's preview it. I'm logged in now as a customer, but let me go ahead and log in as my manager. And I have a typo. Now, once I logged in, now you can see I have both Max and Row in here. I can click view more details and row should have two service request records attached. So once we walked through that earlier part, uh, it took some time, but then once you understand how NAC works, you the building really becomes quite quick. So I'm gonna pause there. I'm gonna take a quick look at the questions that were submitted. I'll stop my preview here. Um, I know uh, Max and team have been following up and answering questions. Um, if there is an opportunity for me to demo anything or show anything, I definitely will do that. So give me just a moment here um, as I take a look at some of these questions here. And thank you guys for submitting these questions. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to back up here. We'll start at the top here. A lot of people coming in to say hello. Welcome. Thanks, everyone, again for joining me today. Um, hopefully the information that you saw has been useful. Um, let's see, one of the questions, um, one question I have is how to pull data from a related parent record into a child record. Um, so hopefully I was able to answer that question um, uh, live. If you could just let us know um, 
basically as just a recap, if you're pulling data from a related parent record into a child record, uh, it just depends how you want to handle that. So we can do a couple of things. Let's say we wanted to head back into our service record. And let's say on the service record, we wanted to pull an address in from our customer table. We can add what we call a text formula field. And we can just say address. And the, the great thing about the text formula field is you can do things like concatenation. Um, you can do some conditionals, but you can also say, hey, let me look up on my uh, related table on that customer record and pull in my address field. And you'll see this option here for fields. As you scroll down, you'll start to see information that's available in your, your customer table. And so I have my address field available. I can pull that in. That will happen automatically. So if you have any updates to that address, it will update across all of your, um, your tables. So since we have it as a text formula field here, um, if I were to change that address on my customer record, it'll update here. That's one way um, within NAC. Um, and if we look at the records there, we should see the address that I input gets pulled into that there. Um, another way to do that is if you're looking at pulling that in based on a view. So for example, you're looking at our uh, manager dashboard and um, or the customer dashboard, as I mentioned um, before, and we have this service request record um, under your columns. We talked about this briefly. I want to pull in my address into the service record. I could also use my connection option here to then pull in that address field and show that there. Uh, since we had added it as an, a text formula field, we can also add that field too as well. But this is another way to access those connected uh, fields into a view. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I think um, Max shared some information there as well. Um, let us know if not. Uh, let's see. Next question, or just kind of jumping around here. Uh, let's see. I have used these templates before and prior to when NAC had the capability to provide the data model. So the data model help a lot in understanding the template apps. Uh, I think it just depends on what um, uh, question, uh, what, what it is that you're looking to try to understand. Um, if you're trying to understand um, basically the structure, your relationships, the data model is going to be great for that. So you can def definitely see your tables and see where all of your relationships are, 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 are coming into play. Let me save this here, jump into our data model. So you can see our, our customers here is tied to our services. And again, this gets, gets into um, that primary key foreign key um, scenario. While we don't have those ID fields captured here, you can see that on our services table that we are connecting back to our customer table. So this will give you some insight as to that information there, as well as what fields are. You can see them all kind of in one quick view uh, as well. So if you've got any additional information around um, what specifically um, are you trying to understand about the templates, uh, if you're definitely wanting to understand structure and how things are set up, uh, this will definitely let you know on the data side and a field side, but in terms of how your pages are set up, uh, that information won't be very clear um, within this view. Uh, let's see. Um, jumping around here. And thanks for your patience while I read through some of this. Um, Oh, and I, th I think we possibly may have answered this question as well. Um, I'd like to create an alphanumeric formula field that concatenates values from several fields, including um, number fields. When I tried to use the formula field option, it didn't display all the fields. Any recommendations for how to do this? So um, if, if you're meaning, hopefully you were trying to do this with our, as I mentioned here, the text formula field. Um, if that didn't work, um, definitely some of the information it looks like that Max shared here. Um, let's see, it didn't sound like that worked. Wouldn't let you add the value from a number field I tried to create. 
that may be something, um, yeah, Max will reach out to find out um, what's going on there. The text formula sh field should work there. Um, I'm trying to think of some instances where you might not see a value uh, pop up if it's it's happening with some, but not with others. Um, it definitely will depend on you know what we what we review and what your information is showing. So, for example, if a value is is blank or there's some information that's not there, you might not see that for some records as opposed to other records. Um, so, something to consider as you dive into that. Uh, Let's see. So I see a question here around the drop down menu. It looks like um, Max responded here. Just as a kind of a quick overview of that drop down menu so you can understand it a little bit better. If we have our manager dashboard here, let's maybe add another dashboard or another start page, as we call it for our managers, that starts with showing all of the service records. Um, and we'll add a grid, show all of the services in the system. Um, we'll just go ahead and click continue. We now have, um, if I jump back to my pages, this, this second set of pages that's available for my managers. So uh, one thing to keep in mind uh, with uh, these login pages, when your user logs in on, let's say, the manager dashboard, it'll automatically log them into services. So if I come to take a look at my preview, you'll see my services tab is already, I'm already logged in um, because I've already logged in on one page. So just securing the page, all that means is that you're just saying who has permissions or who has the rights to see this page. Um, so in our example here, we've got the two um, uh, drop down options, or we have the not drop down options, but we have the two tabs up here, navigation items. Um, if we wanted to put those all under one uh, drop down menu, we could. Adding this new drop down menu, we can choose those two pages um, and we can click continue. And this would be maybe our manager menu. And now that we add that, you'll see them cascade under now this new drop down option. So again, if I jump into my live app, you'll now see that this has been turned into a drop down. So that will help kind of clean up your app, especially if you've got a lot of start pages for a group. You can start to group pages based on uh, theme or functionality and uh, for your different users to so that you don't have a long navigation up at the top there. Uh, let's see. Taking a look here at questions. We've got a few more minutes. Um, it looks like uh, Max was able to get a, a, a hold of or get through a lot of those, but um, I definitely want to kind of uh, kind of recap some of the things that we went through today and then also make sure that you guys understand how you can get support um, from our team here at Mac. Um, so let me give me just a moment to switch screens around here. Okay, so we, we um, went through our Q&A. Um, getting support, our team is available from, for you from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's Monday through Friday, U.S. time. Um, you can reach out to us at onboarding at NAC.com. This will reach our onboarding team here directly. And um, if you have some further questions you want to learn about working with support, um, you can uh, click this link here. This will take you to our knowledge base and uh, has some additional resources about working with support. And if um, once you do decide if NAC's gonna work for you, you sign up for a plan, um, what working with support looks like um, once you're, you've are you um, been onboarded to the product. Uh, you also have some great resources uh, within um, the NAC uh, platform. If I dive into, back into our builder for our customer portal here, um, if you haven't seen, we've got our help icon here in the top right-hand side and you will see a lot of resources here that will help you get started with NAC. Um, we've got um, our knowledge base, you'll see links there. Um, we've got options for extending your app. So we talked about working with um, our API, JavaScript, CSS, or maybe you want to integrate with another tool. Uh, we have integrations with Zapier, Integramat, which is now make.com, um, and Formstack, you'll find some information there. Um, as well. 
if you think, okay, we got into it, NAC's going to work for us, but we want to maybe potentially work with someone, you can definitely hire an expert um, to help you get started. Our experts are um, vetted through the um, through NAC. They have to show proficiency in our product before we allow them to become an expert. And um, But once they're in, they um, can help you with anything from consulting to training to actually building out your app or customizing even further. Um, our experts are also super active in the community. So especially if you've got questions around custom code and you're using custom code, the community is a great place to reach out for that type of information. Um, they are uh, pretty um, active and will respond um, and get you some answers. So I know we are right at time. As I mentioned, there's always a ton of information to cover. Um, we have these weekly. So if you do have some additional questions, feel free to jump into those webinars. You can even submit them early uh, so that we could potentially cover them in our next webinar. With that said, I will uh, let everyone go. Again, I am really, really uh, glad that you guys were able to, uh, to connect with us today. Um, again, reach out to us at onboarding at NAC.com. That will get to our onboarding team. We are happy to help you to continue to build out your solutions and, and offer any support that we can. All right, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.